Creating sponsored content through brand deals is how most full-time YouTubers and content creators on TikTok and Instagram make their living and produce a full-time income from their social media post. Today, I wanna to talk to you about everything I think you need to know if you wanna work with brands, produce sponsored content, and get paid from it. Because if you want to be a full-time content creator, this is how the far majority of you are gonna make it sustainable and make a full-time income as a content creator. For a lot of this, we're gonna focus on YouTube as it is the platform that I'm most familiar with, but this will apply to a lot of you when it comes to brand deals and doing sponsored content posts for Instagram and TikTok as well. I've actually made a significant amount of money, thousands of dollars for individual Instagram posts, and I have far less of an audience on Instagram than I do on YouTube. So even if you are a smaller content creator, you have a smaller YouTube channel or Instagram profile, you have less than say 100,000 audience or even around maybe 10,000 or lower, this is still something that's viable for you. And I've known content creators with a thousand or more followers to still be able to do some level of sponsored content working with brands. And speaking of sponsored, today's video is sponsored by my good friends over at Creative Juice, but more on that later. Let's focus on the first thing first. Most of you are having trouble actually even working with brands. Typically, this goes one of two ways. Either brands come to you, which is obviously gonna be more practical if you have a larger audience, or number two, you can reach out to brands, you can pitch them on working together and building a relationship. We're gonna explore both options here, but I do need upfront for you to know that working with sponsors and doing this sponsored content for your brand deals is different than affiliate marketing, something that you've heard me talk about here on the channel before. Affiliate marketing is commission-based. You can actually negotiate to have that in your brand deals where you are paid for the performance and sales or signups that happen in terms of you working with a brand. However, when we're talking about sponsored content, paying brand deals, we're talking about being paid for the actual content and deliverables that you're providing, regardless of how they perform in terms of sales. Two very different things, but you can combine them and actually earn a lot more money. And this is something I do in terms of a lot of the brand partnerships that I have, because for the majority of them, I started as an affiliate first, and that actually proved myself to the brand because I proved that I could be a great advocate for their products or services and that I could produce buying customers for them. Now, when it comes to working with brands and you decide that the road for you is gonna be that you're gonna do outreach, I would say that one of the most important things you can do is identify the brands that already work with creators in your niche or for your type of content. And then out of doing that research, I think you should make a list of the brands you actually want to work with. For a lot of creators and influencers, they make the mistake of thinking that every opportunity that are offered is something they need to say yes to. They don't realize that you need to do things like negotiate. You need to actually decide which relationships are the most advantageous to you. That you could go into this with a plan of saying, here are my 10 or 20 favorite brands that I actually use, that I know, and that I care about, and that my community and my audience loves. And those are the brands that I'm gonna work with. And if it's not one of those brands, maybe you don't work with them. There's a lot of issues with people in the community getting into bad relationships with brands that they regret later for one reason or another. So I think a lot of you, if you're even considering doing sponsored content should make a list of the brands you actually love and want to work with. These should be the brands that you're trying to attract to reach out to you or the ones that you should pitch in terms of reaching out to them and building a relationship. So how do you pitch and approach these brands in the first place? Well, for one thing, once you have a list of you know which brands you wanna work with or reach out to, instead of just like, oh, whoever will pay me, which is probably not a good idea, then you should find a point of contact for working with those brands. And there's a lot of ways you can do this. You can do some research. The best thing you could probably do is either find somebody that works with the brand in Twitter and find somebody that represents them and is in charge of marketing or go to the PR, the press release page on their website and then find an email or point of contact there. There are a lot of ways to do the initial outreach to brands 
but you can't really do any of it if you don't have somebody to contact in the first place. In terms of attracting brands to you, well, a lot of times brands want to work with creators that they see are relevant in their niche, have uh, the respect of the community, and have a following to begin with. For a lot of you, your biggest barrier is, well, I'm a small influencer, I'm a small YouTuber, I'm a small creator, I have less than 10,000 followers in any or all of my platforms. If you're a micro influencer under 10,000 or a nano influencer under 1,000, one of the things you should be thinking about, in my opinion, is just putting your audience and your community first and growing that. I wouldn't want to rush into a relationship with brands. A lot of you are trying to do this because you're hoping that it legitimizes you. And I understand that, or you're doing it because you'd like to earn more money online. I think for a lot of you, the best thing you could do is focus on growing and building your audience because it's gonna put you in a better position to negotiate with brands because once you name your price, sometimes for most of you, you struggle with negotiating anyway. You struggle with valuing and pricing yourself. The sooner you do that, and if you're doing it with the leverage of a smaller follower account, some of you, it's just gonna be harder for you to increase your rates over time, not because people won't pay it, but because you'll be reluctant or hesitate too much to ask for it. So sometimes delaying can be better. But if you don't want to do that, then my answer is you have to make a good case for why you should be an ambassador of the brand. The best way you can do that is to advocate for the brand for free and show them what you can do beforehand. An easy way to do this is if you're doing product reviews, that's gonna be probably the easiest way for you to go ahead and start to get some traction and show a brand what you can do. Another avenue to that is become an affiliate and make some sales and be able to use that sale, those sales numbers as a part of your negotiation and prove that you're already delivering ROI and then make a case for what you could do if you have the financial support or the access to review units or the access to talk to people at the company. It really think about what puts you in the best position to create value for the brand and then do that based off of your skills, your reputation, or the sales numbers instead of the size of your audience and what access to them means. Use and create your own authority. If you can create your own authority, and you can leverage that, then you're in a better position to negotiate as a smaller YouTuber or as a smaller influencer. You have to create some leverage. You can't expect brands to just wanna work with you out of the goodness of their heart. Brands working with you just to do it and give you a shot as a small influencer, it sounds nice, but it's not realistic to expect that. Let's talk about deliverables and what brands expect. When you're working with brands, before we even get to the contract stage, we have to do something that's called basically the scope of work. This is what they can expect in the package for your content. And this may not be one video or one post. This could be multiple posts across platforms, which is usually the route that I do in order to just build a deeper relationship with the brands and to be able to, frankly, put myself in a position to charge what I'm worth by offering as much as I can. So deliverables could take the form of, are we doing one video or are we doing three videos in this campaign? When are they due? How many posts am I doing in my other platforms? Are you going to want me to send something out to my email list? Again, a lot of you, you're overlooking the fact that an email list can elevate the value that you have as a brand ambassador and that it can actually increase the price amount that you can charge significantly because you have direct access to your audience's inbox. So it's just different things like that. One of the things I'm able to bundle in my brand deals is uh, the podcast. If you guys don't know, I have the Create Something Awesome Today podcast. So there's some extra opportunities for reach by me just bundling that in, post in my Instagram. I don't have like the smallest following over there. I have over 20,000 followers on Instagram. So by growing your other platforms, it can actually really help you package and pitch yourself more effectively, gives you more deliverables to offer, and by having more deliverables to offer, you're able to justify increasing your rates. In terms of negotiating contracts, there's more to it than people think, and this does affect how you're able to price your brand deals and how much you're able to be paid. A lot of people think that they're charging for the views, the followers, those things, the engagement metrics. And while that could be part of it, you have to consider this. What if you actually made content for the brand itself on their platform? All of a sudden, the price tag that you're thinking of for your views and your followers 
is irrelevant if you're producing content for the brand for their own platform. And there are brands that will request this. So you need to figure out your pricing and negotiations without having to even factor in the size of your audience because the work, the content, the deliverables, the actual thing that they need to get attention still has a price tag on it that they would have to pay an ad agency for anyway. They'd have to pay actors or actresses if they weren't paying you. They'd have to pay video editors on payroll and staff. Like the job of video editor, the job of video producer, the job of script writer, the job of talent on camera, all has a price tag that has nothing to do with somebody's follower count. And if you're only pricing on your follower count and your views, you're obviously always going to undercharge. You're not negotiating from a place that respects the fact that you're an actual content creator and not just somebody with an audience. Get paid for the thing you're actually doing. The other aspect of negotiation besides, you know, access to the audience, the value of creating and producing the content, especially if you have a team that's helping you produce that content is also, there's another version of that. What are the rights, licensing, exclusivity, what are those terms and what is that looking like? Also revisions and creative control. There's a price tag for having somebody as a cook in your kitchen. So these are things to consider. There's an opportunity cost to exclusivity where you should be charging more. If you can't work with the competitors in any way, shape or form, then those are opportunities you're turning down. That has a price tag attached to it in terms of exclusivity and loyalty. There's a price built into that. The ability to license rights to use your content on their platforms or use your face and your likeness or your testimonials in their own ad campaigns. Those are all other points in negotiating that are, you know, line items that should increase the price because it increases the value. You're totally justified in asking for more money for that. This is another reason that so many influencers undersell themselves underprice, negotiate very poorly. This is why as a coach, it's actually worked out so well for me is because it's worth paying to have somebody tell you how much more you should be charging when you're underpricing yourself by as much as 50% or more. And this is not just small creators, small YouTubers that are doing this. I've known people with over a quarter million subscribers that were asking for half of the money that they should have been asking for. I've known influencers to try to price themselves at $500 that I told them they need to charge $1,500 for them. The brand didn't even haggle with them on it. You could be missing out on as much as three times the money because you don't know how to evaluate your own worth in the market. And unfortunately, just using some kind of app or any kind of tool to just try to throw your numbers in and to price yourself is not an effective way to know what to charge for brand deals. I'm actually going to do a completely separate video on that. So you want to definitely make sure that you're looking out on the YouTube channel, that you're subscribed over there with notifications on, because uh, that video is probably going to be one of the most important videos I ever make on this topic. Now, when we talk about price, this actually is a perfect opportunity for me to talk about my sponsor for today, Creative Juice, because we're talking about money. Creative Juice is an amazing tool that actually helps content creators when it comes to getting paid. Not only are they a sponsor, but I'm a direct investor in this company, so full disclosure there, but it is fantastic for a lot of reasons. For one thing, they have an invoicing tool that you can use completely free, and for those of you doing brand deals, not knowing and realizing that, hey, you have to send out these invoices. You could be paying $40 a month for software to do that, $20 a month, so this could save you hundreds right then and there. In terms of also capturing your money, you can sign up for a free Juice bank account, and this could be a way for you to capture those funds without having to pay fees. When I use other payment processors, uh, on some of my brand deals, I had a $5,000 brand deal, for example, uh, between getting that money in and then also transferring it to my business bank account, I lost $150 that I could have saved just by going through Creative Juice. And so that's why they're a wonderful partner. I love having them as an option and as a tool for creators. And you can sign up completely free using my link in the description down below. Creative Juice is also making other great financial tools for content creators. It's gonna really help you with the business side of being a creator. So definitely sign up. Thanks again to Creative Juice for sponsoring today's video. When it comes to getting paid and sending out your invoices, there are terms in the contract that you need to look over and negotiate. Some of you, you might wanna have a lawyer look over your contracts. I look over the majority of them myself. 
You could also work with a talent manager and they may actually do this and you could just say, here are my lines in the sand, make sure these things are never in any of my contracts. That's actually really helpful. I did a video over on my podcast where I talked to my good friend, Sarah Dietschy, who is amazing when it comes to brand deals and as a wealth of knowledge. She's the one who actually gave me a lot of advice I'm working with a talent manager. Currently for a lot of my brand deals, I actually work with Space Station Integrations and they are amazing. I've really loved the relationship that I have with them. And it's been really helpful in not only getting more brand deals, but just taking a lot of the stress, of the negotiations and the contracts off of my plate because I could just tell them basically what I want, what my standards are. And they work with that and make sure that I'm getting what I want or what is agreeable or what's, you know, in my best interest without me having to agonize over it so much. In terms of capturing money on your invoice, there are terms like net 15, net 30, and net 60. This means that if it's net 15, you get payment 15 days after the content is published and the invoice goes out. Net 30, same thing, it's 30 days from date of publish. Uh, net 60 is 60 days from date of publish. A lot of the times they will also want you when you submit your invoice to, um, you know, within another week or two, they'll want to see some upfront analytics on how things are performing. On occasion, some brands will want you to integrate with a software that lets them do some tracking on those analytics as well through your YouTube or your Instagram account. Just make sure that you do some background research before doing this so that you don't potentially get hacked or lose access to your accounts or anything like that. This is another reason why I try to only work with established and reputable companies, smaller content creators and influencers. One of the other risks that you're taking is if you're so desperate to take a brand deal to either make money or legitimize yourself, you're more vulnerable to potentially, you know, being taken advantage of one way or another. You don't know what you don't know. This is why learning through content like this or getting outside help with coaching or a talent agency is usually in a creator's best interest because otherwise, unless you're working with a high profile and established brand name, uh, there's a lot of opportunities for you to end up being taken advantage of or you know having something bad happen because of the fact that you just don't know any better and you were really excited about an opportunity because you didn't think you were gonna get one. When it comes to working with brands, make sure you understand the deadlines and you are both clear about communication and expectations. This is really important. Make sure that you've given them every opportunity to get you paid on time. So make sure that you uh, are set up and you know how you're gonna do your invoices. And again, you can use Creative Juice for free for that. Uh, know what your payment processing is going to be. Maybe take into consideration that there might be fees depending on how you go about that. Also, if you're going to be late on deliverables or if you're having any type of issue, just communicate upfront and honestly with the brand and let them know what's going on. There are a lot of times where they will accommodate whatever your situation is. The most important thing in any working relationship or maybe any relationship in general is just to have clear lines of communication and set expectations and set boundaries where they're needed. Make sure that when you decide to form a relationship with a brand, you're also taking your audience into consideration here. Nothing happens without the audience. Don't take them for granted and don't just go chasing a bag of money that's right in front of you without thinking about, is this something that realistically helps my audience if I advocate for this? You have to be able to put the audience first and you don't ever wanna be in a position where you genuinely know for a fact that you're a sellout. I hate that word, but there are instances where people know that a brand and working with a brand is not in the interest of their audience and they do it anyway. Never put yourself in that situation. Something that could help a lot of you is being able to package what you're offering in a media kit and be able to send that to a brand. Something that I created is the Brand Deals Starter Kit. Some of you might be familiar with the YouTube Starter Kit. It's not a course or anything like that. It's a resource that I made that basically can put you in a better position if you just are overwhelmed with all this in terms of having some checklists, some guidelines, and some best practices, as well as some templates. Like for example, we're putting a media kit template in there for people who struggle with making these kinds of things because you know, not everyone's a designer that can use Photoshop or Canva to make a presentation deck that communicates what they offer, uh, what everything is in a standard form. The other thing you might wanna do is you might wanna make an email template for how you reach out to brands. 
and send them that. Uh, we are putting email templates into the Brand Deal Starter Kit as well, because again, a lot of people just struggle with writing an email and knowing what they should put in, what they should leave out, what do brands want? And there's more content that I plan to put out around brand deals, but I do need your help with that. I need to know what questions you have about working with sponsors and doing that sponsored content in the first place. And I need that in the comment section. It's actually going to really help me with putting together uh, videos like, you know, 15 tips for sponsored content and working with brands, as well as, you know, videos like how to price your sponsorship and paid brand deals. These are videos that I'm going to be putting out but they can be better if I have your input on them and your feedback. So make sure you're dropping me a comment. If you enjoyed this video, make sure you're checking out my playlist on brand deals and sponsorships. That's gonna be linked in the description down below. I've also done another video that if you are a small influencer starting out, you'll definitely wanna watch this video on brand deals. As always, thank you so much for watching and don't forget, go out there and create something awesome today. Take care.